<laughs> okay, so the, um, the history can tell what government's in, in place in Australia by the spelling of program. Uh, if the Conservatives are in, there's an extra me on the end and then uh, government. This is take, it takes six weeks every time the government changes in Australia to sort out. Um, we were established under the Hawke um, government at the 1990 election. Uh, if you read the election speech, Bob Hawke only promised uh, six things. One of them was CRCs and they delivered it the, first, uh, the next year. So the first round of CRCs were delivered by Bob Hawke, the second by uh, Keating at Combe at the end of Hawke's time. He still claims a very strong ownership of the program, but then when the Howard government came in, they looked at it very carefully, did a major review and actually boosted it uh, quite significantly. So it does have bipartisan support. We've just been through our fifth re official review, which is our 11th unofficial review. So we do average a review every two years in the program. Um, but we've come through that quite well and the CRC P's come out of that. Um, there have been 212, there are 33 at the moment, so there aren't that many arguments that we haven't thought of. Um, we generally know uh, uh, what they are. We're very small. Um, if this is the famous 10 billion that the government, the Commonwealth government spends each year on R&D. A third of that is the tax measures. 20% uh, uh, is the block funding to the universities. Then you go the ARC, the NH and MRC, CSIRO, other government. And then we're this little one down here, one and a half percent, but we're an important program because we link many of the other bits of, of the pie. Uh, just a reminder of some of the things that have come out, and I cut this, this section of the slides uh, right down, but I can give you lots of chapter and verse of lots of examples. Uh, tooth moose, um, we make 400 million bucks worth of this stuff in Melbourne each year, gets exported up to um, um, uh, Tokyo where it's packaged and goes all around the world and people put it on their teeth to pull calcium into the teeth. So the, the intellectual property is a protein called RIT, which is trade named Ricaldon. This is the highest intellectual property uh, income for Melbourne University for five years. Uh, it's no longer, I think it dropped off this year, uh, but it has been. Uh, if you go to Japan, you'll, at every checkout, you'll see chewing gum as you do here, but there'll be Ricaldon chewing gum there. It's the highest selling uh, chewing gum in Japan. We ca you can't buy it here. Um, uh, they're uh, out of the oral health uh, CRC um, and that's a, that's a Japanese company. Um, uh, one of the famous ones out of CRC is the long wear contact lenses. So CSIRO and the University of New South Wales uh, got together through the Vision CRC or what is now the Vision CRC. This is, uh, these are sold by uh, Novartis uh, and is nearly a three billion dollar a year seller. So uh, Gardasil is about two and a half billion. So that puts you in, in context. This is one of the biggest medical device uh, outcomes from Australia. Smart Cap, this is a spin-off. We don't spin off that many companies in CRCs because usually the commercialisers in the tent, uh, in the collaboration or close to the collaboration. But sometimes they'll come up with unknown stuff and, and spin off a company to, to uh, commercialise the intellectual property. In this case, it's from the mining CRC who were interested in fatigue control in uh, drivers in mines. It's boring driving a mining truck, but the mining trucks are worth 80 million bucks. So uh, they're interested uh, in your safety and the 80 million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, you can probably buy mining trucks for less than that at the moment. Uh, that's a Bluetooth unit and through here there's uh, there's uh, electronics that are measuring your brain waves and it classifies you as uh, one to five, one being asleep, five being far too much coffee uh, and it'll tell a little blue u Bluetooth unit on the front of the truck that you really should be taking a break, you're too fatigued to be driving this, uh, this vehicle. Uh, if, if, if it doesn't, uh, if you don't take a break it'll tell the mine manager eventually. So that's a competing technology we see in machines or some of see in machines work, uh, but a different approach. So funding for the CRC program, it's about $150, $180 million a year program out of the Commonwealth Government. Uh, and that's the cash from it. That makes up about 22% of the research. So this is 36 bit more and I think we have program. So this is the last year of the Labor government. Uh, I haven't pulled out the new figures. Uh, then the participants, um, 
almost match that in cash, not quite, uh, dollar for dollar, and then a lot of in-kind. So it drags a lot of um, resources from both the private and public sector into collaboration to do work. Um, often people put down in-kind. This is pretty important stuff. It's companies using synchrotrons. It's, um, it, it's access to big defence equipment, mines, all sorts of things. It is serious stuff and available to the whole collaboration. So um, the government's done an amazing thing. They've told us in advance when they expect to call for CRCs. Um, and so we're now back on. The new minister's told me there's not going to be a review. Uh, it's part of the system. He's not just told me, he's told our whole board that. So they, they have published when the 19th selection round. We're in the middle of the 18th selection round. So there are set, 14 CRCs applied, seven are now shortlisted, uh, and we should uh, have them hopefully funded by the beginning of uh, next calendar year. Sorry this is small, this is a screenshot from business.gov.au. And my advice is if you find it on business.gov.au, it is a good idea to take a screenshot because you'll probably never find it again. <laughs> uh, that, that impenetrable website, um, or you call Jordan from my office and say, where is it? Uh, it ain't intuitive, I can tell you that. So the 19th selection round is coming up in May next year. So you can start preparing for this now if you're interested in a CRC. Uh, if you're interested in the area, you're welcome to talk to us. I know the pipeline of many of the discussions that are going on and we can put you in contact or uh, if you want to lead your own. So, uh, but I'll spend most of today talking about the CRC project. So the CRC program, as good as it has been, it's a little bit impenetrable, especially to uh, SMEs. Uh, and so David Miles, who did the last review, said we need to do something about this. And we've said, our association has said for years, maybe we need some sort of mini CRC program, something like that. So David just said, well, just have something, call them CRC projects, CRCPs, they very quickly became. And um, the features of these are pretty simple. Uh, it's a new program, as I say, to make them more accessible, particularly encouraging small and medium enterprises to, uh, to participate with in the program. It's a collaboration program still. Uh, up to $3 million up to three years, so up to a million dollars a year over three years, no renewals is the rule. So the government people said, could you put that in italics? In fact, could you bold it? In fact, could you underline it, the up to uh, there? So I've done what they asked and up to three million, so it doesn't have to be. Uh, if you're in a room of academics, they default to the top. Um, uh, but it, you'll see the the um, the average uh, grant uh, contract in the first one doesn't go to the four million a year. You've got to have two industry entities. Industry entities is a funny term. It's defined uh, by what it's not. And an industry entity means a, a, an organisation of which at least half their money does not come from government. So, uh, so the government doesn't want to be funding the government to collaborate all the time. So this is a very clear, they've had to come up with this. One has to be an SME, there, there can be many, there can be more than two, uh, and several of the applicants' applications that were successful had many more than two. Uh, there has to be at least one research organisation, which is interesting, because um, CRCs have always had to have a university involved. In theory, you could have a CRC without a university involved. The, you could have a research organisation that wasn't a university. Um, but I don't think any of them were. I think they all included at least one uh, university. And importantly, they're available three times a year and that's now published. Again, this is a screenshot, I apologise for the size, but we've just had round one. They were a bit late in the uh, outcomes announced in May. Well, I think they came in the last week of July. Uh, and funding from July, well, they're all starting to get their contracts now, I think Marcus told me his isn't contracted, but most of them are now contracted and some are receiving money. There was a federal election of some considerable length in here, so um, that didn't surprise me. Um, but w they've now published ahead, a year ahead, uh, when, when we're expected. Now, they, there was slippage on this. for The round will not close this month. It'll close next month on the 26th of uh, 
of uh, October. So there, if you had a collaboration and an idea ready to go, there's still plenty of time uh, to put it in, uh, in the current round. If you don't have your collaborations ready uh, and your idea ready and things ready to go, then uh, put it off because there is a round coming again in January. Uh, this minister, uh, we now have Greg Hunt as our minister, um, ha ha has indicated he's going to stick to this timetable uh, regardless of whether he's around or he's got an event he needs an announceable for. Um, so he's going to keep pushing them out uh, regardless. So uh, that's terrific that we've taken them out of. A minister doesn't get a lot of, a lot of kudos for announcing a funding round anyway. Uh, so we're glad that they'll hopefully just be announced in due course. So there are six uh, selection criteria now for both. These are new since the, um, the uh, miles review. They're not equally weighted. Uh, so they're 30% on industry impact and 30% on the excellence of the research. So there, it's, it's critical to get those two things right, uh, obviously. Um, and that's it, it, this is about research that creates an industry impact. Industry is a very wide term in CRC, so it can be government industry, it can be national parks, it can be beyond uh, um, straight commercial industry. But the pendulum goes either way. So when Labor's in power, they're more happy with so-called public good CRCs. Um, and when uh, the Conservatives are in power, it tends to be more straight commercialisation type CRCs. The current minister, he voiced to us, he said, oh, I think about one third, two thirds sounds about right. Two, two thirds being highly commercial CRCs. Um, but it's up to, there's, a, there's a, a, an advisory committee that advises him, it's up to them. Your uh, governance is really, really important in a CRC. So I always say the big advantages that cooperative research centres have is that they get a decent amount of time. They've been seven years. They, now you can bid it for up to 10 for the full CRC. So researchers aren't immediately looking for the next grant. Uh, so you can actually get on and do work. Uh, and the, the scale is big enough that you can actually um, get out there and, and do uh, a flexible amount of work. So if a uh, head of a CRC or the board decides we need to put a postdoc in Harvard for the next six months to bring back a technique, it's, it's easy to do. You don't have to wait and apply for money and do all that. So the thing, and then the industry leadership, the focus uh, of a group of people deciding these are the things we're going to concentrate on and these are the things we're going to put to the side is terribly important. So it's important to get your management right. Uh, CRCPs include an education program. So this is probably one of the areas I get the most questions about what does that mean in a CRCP? Um, because traditionally the education program has been a PhD program uh, and people say, well, we can't deliver a PhD program in three years uh, in a CRCP. Um, but CRCs have been expanding their ex uh, education program. It, it is what is most appropriate to your industry to make stuff happen. So the example I always use, the Aboriginal Health CRC always says to me, actually, we don't need very many more PhDs. Probably do quite well with less. Um, what we need is nurse assistants in certain places and people that know about compression bandaging. And so they can run courses or establish courses in TAFE that then run in outside the CRC. Value for money and national benefits, I'll leave you to answer those. So I said to the chairman of the CRC committee, uh, what if I, I'm talking to researchers coming up and then industry, if there was one bit of advice you would give, what would it be? And he said, answer the fucking questions. <laughs> so I only wrote down answer the questions, but there's an emphasizing word of some, some Thing. He says, it is amazing how incredibly smart people proposing amazingly clever technologies fail to answer the questions. There's six selection criteria, but he only paraphrased them as three questions. What's your problem? How are you going to solve it? And how strong is your team and your approach? Um, the previous chair of the selection committee said, everyone overemphasizes this and underemphasizes this. So uh, if you look at every CRC, it's doing something important. Um, 
and you're not going to win a CIC on saying our problem is bigger than your problem. You're going to win a CIC on our solution is better than your solution. Uh, so um, even at interview, I've been told people in a two hour interview for the big CRCs, you're not interviewed for a CRCP, for a two hour interview, people will not get off this topic of how important the problem is. Um, and actually, it's usually pretty easy to explain. This bit is the harder to explain and more competitive area. I also, in the first round, and Marcus is definitely not in this because he says the, four, the paperwork was actually relatively easy, but I had a lot of complaints from people saying they couldn't put enough words in the application. Uh, my, my response is good. Um, you shouldn't put more words in there. You should put good words that people can understand. Uh, so the example I use is if I had more time, I would have written you a shorter letter. I actually, I've, I've said that was Mark Twain for many, many years, and I actually checked and it's not, um, and it's accredited to all sorts of people, but it's probably Pascal, but it doesn't matter. Um, um, you've got to write succinctly for a CRC, both, both of them, they have word limits. Uh, so the industrial transformation research program within the ARC at the moment, those applications can get really, really big, even though they're word limited as well in the Thing, but you can't just keep adding CRC, uh, CVs and things like that that you can. So the application is about a 30 page uh, document. Remember, it's, a, it's five people sitting at a table that have read the whole lot and, and they're trying to read all of them. So, um, uh, you know, they, they, they don't need stuff repeated. Uh, often you write your applications in weeks apart for different sections and so you get repetitive. Um, I always say get your spouse to read it, uh, the Mrs. Peacock effect. Like people will say, who should I pay as a consultant to read my application? Get you, somebody, unless your husband or wife has got a PhD in exactly the same area as you or uh, whatever, if they're an intelligent um, non-expert in your area, they'll be incredibly honest with you and tell you, this is crap, you know, you need, you've repeated yourself here, this is, they'll correct your English and all that. Uh, this is uh, the examples of all the uh, CRCPs. So there wasn't 10, there were 11. Uh, the couple of things to note quickly, uh, 10 out of the 11 were fully funded. These are all on the website and available, if you can find them. Um, so the CRC program is outcome focused. So it is not like some of the grant in programs where what we got to a situation where you had one in five chance of getting half what you asked for few years ago and that's gone up a little bit. If you ask for a million bucks in the CRC program, you'll usually get the million dollars. Unless it looks like it's, you, it's fake or you put in too much ambit and fat in there, then they'll say come back next year. So they don't tend to negotiate with you. They did negotiate with one out of the 10, out of the 11, and so 10 out of 11 were fully funded for what they were requesting. These are the CRCPs. Um, you can see very varied topics. There were three in, um, in the built environment uh, this time around. Uh, I haven't listed them all here, I th uh, um, thing, but they, they, I think the smallest grant was half, was 582,000 there, and the biggest was, was the full three million that can be uh, requested, but they, they don't. They varied quite considerably. Quickly, so 11 of 91 got funded, four were non-compliant, uh, so only 87 were judged. Uh, we don't know if that'll go up or down. I suspect it'll go up, not down. The uh, chairman of the committee says there was, uh, it was really strong. They, they're very happy with the 11 they picked, but they said the quality did drop off. There was a big tail. Um, he didn't say big tail. He said there was a lot of shit in there as well. <laughs> You've probably already gathered that he's a very rude man. Um, as I said, 10 of 11 were fully funded. Participant contribution is important, takes time. Um, in the week that they were due, I got phone calls from people saying, can you call off these researchers that are hassling me to sign up for this CRCP? I can't believe there would be researchers in the week of an application seeking to collaborate with a company. It blows your credibility completely. This is a serious collaboration. 
of serious amounts of money that you're asking from companies and people's own earnings, um, and they are meant to be leading it. Um, strangely enough, uh, the, at the moment, we think the best bids get funded. Um, but there are an awful lot of conspiracy theories about <laughs> that, that list. Um, and I've been responding to letters today uh, in the shortlisting of CRCs. So to have any hope, you've really got to understand the business. Now, if you're the applicant as a CRCP, obviously you understand your business. But if you're putting up a research proposal, uh, you need to understand very closely and carefully what are the pinch points where you'll really make the biggest difference. So you're not putting up a proposal to say we want to study this area of activity. We're, we're doing this, you know, this very specific thing that will change something. Yeah. Um, make sure you're talking to the right people in a company um, and, and the, um, from the researchers in the audience, are you asking what they want or telling them what they need? And uh, often we're coming at collaborations from the wrong ends and, and uh, it's important. So I always say to the researchers in the room, how can you tell if you've been talking with a company enough to put up a CRCP? I, I say, have you been physically to their plant or their company uh, recently? And how, is re how recent is recent? If you haven't been there in the last 12 months, very often I don't think you're probably in a position to be bidding for this type of grant. This is a serious proposal. Okay, very quickly, leverage rates. It's not quite as good on the 22% the of the money goes in the big CRCs. It was 31 in the first round of the CRC. So two thirds, one third about. Uh, and these are on the website, I won't keep going, but basically the money wasn't matched, cash for dollar for dollar was matched about 50 cents in the dollar for the, for the cash. Um, but then the in-kind was about double. So again, they're on the website. Um, our, I put out a newsletter every two weeks. Uh, if you sign up for that, you'll be spammed for life and you'll enjoy it. Uh, we have our conference in Canberra next year. So um, come and join us if, if you wish. And I'll hand over to the next person and I assume we're going to take questions together. Yeah.